The text that calls for our attention this day is our reading from Luke chapter 10, and especially these words of Jesus, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Every once in a while, a pastor will get a funny idea in their head. Perhaps they've grown bored with their own sermons, or they fear that their people have done the same. But in that moment, they make the decision that they must do something to capture everyone's attention. When I was beginning ministry, one of the main things that it seemed people would do in this moment was to decide to dress up as a biblical character and give a sermon from that perspective. Somehow the message was supposed to have a little bit more power if it was delivered firsthand from someone that was famous in the Bible. Maybe perhaps part of the reason people did this is because we all sort of wish that we could interact with biblical characters directly. And of course, of all the people we meet in the scriptures, Jesus himself would be among the first that we would love to be able to meet personally. Wouldn't it be something if one Sunday, while you had your head bowed in confession, if Jesus walked up the aisle, wouldn't it be amazing if when you opened your eyes, you saw there Jesus standing instead of your pastor, and if it was Jesus that told you that your sins were forgiven in the name of his Father, in his name, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Wouldn't that be astounding? Wouldn't you tell everybody about it when you got home? Wouldn't you tell everybody that you saw the next week about what had occurred? Well, today, in the part of the catechism that we're focusing on, we are reminded that indeed when our pastor speaks to us the word of forgiveness, that word we usually call absolution, whether that's individually to us or together in a worship service, when he speaks that word that our sins are forgiven, we are to believe that that word is just as valid and certain as if Jesus himself stood in front of us and pronounced it himself. But do we really believe that? Our reading for tonight helps us to understand why it is that we should truly believe that. In our reading, Jesus is sending out the 72. Of course, a larger group than the original 12 he had sent out. But he sends out these 72 with his own authority, just as he had done with the 12. He sent them out with the keys that we talked about last week with the authority to forgive the sins of those who repented and to retain the sins of those who were unrepentant. In our reading for today, Jesus says it a little differently. He tells those 72 as they go out that when they arrive in any place, they are to wish that place peace in the name of Jesus. If their ministry is received and received as Christ's own ministry, they are to rejoice and they are to offer all the benefits of the kingdom to all. They are to forgive sins. They are to heal diseases. And when they do so, they are to let the people know that the kingdom of God has come upon them. However, if their ministry was not received as Christ's own, they are to assure the people that their sins are not forgiven, going as far as to wipe the very dust from their towns off of their feet before they leave. But even then, the message would be the same. The kingdom of God has come upon you. Do you understand this, that when we pray in the Lord's Prayer that the kingdom of God would come, this is what we are praying for. We are praying that the forgiveness of sins would be given to all who repent. And we are also praying, though, that God would rebuke those who are unrepentant, lest they continue in sin. For those are both ways in which the kingdom of God comes. And it comes through God's sent messengers. Those living in the days of the 72 were not to question whether the kingdom of God could still come into their midst simply because the King Jesus was not there in person himself. They were to understand 
that the king had sent these men before himself with the full authority of his kingdom. They were to understand this chiefly for their own comfort, that when those who had been sent assured them of the forgiveness of sins, that the kingdom of God indeed had come upon them, that they were welcomed into full citizenship in that kingdom with all the benefits and privileges thereof, they were to know that those things were certain. They were to know that all the riches of God were theirs. But of course, if they would not receive this, there was a word of warning. If they would not receive the coming of the king through his sent ones, then they would be destroyed by the king. His kingdom would come against you rather than for you. Not even the dust from your town would be allowed to remain. The same is true for you. You do not have to worry about whether the kingdom of God can come into your midst simply because the King Jesus has ascended back into heaven. No, the ones whom God has sent to you indeed bring that kingdom into your midst just as Jesus has promised. And as for you, this is meant for your comfort as well. It is meant to take your troubled and weary conscience, so aware of your own sinful thoughts and deeds, and to put it at rest. If you doubt for a moment whether the sent one of Christ has his authority, well, then you will be robbed of the comfort that God wishes to deliver to you through them. You will wonder where you stand with God, and God does not want that. He wants you to know for certain that you are forgiven, and so he has sent one of flesh and blood with a tongue to speak this good news right into your ears. He does it for you every time you gather for worship and confess your sins. When you hear that word of absolution from your pastor, know that your sins are forgiven. He also does it when you come individually before your pastor and confess your sins in that way. And he speaks to you personally that word of absolution that you need to hear. Yes, those sins that we know and feel in our hearts, those things that we can't get off our conscience, those things the Catechism tells us we should confess to our pastor individually. For he is the one whom God has given for this very purpose. Now some people think Lutherans just don't do that sort of thing, confess their sins individually before their pastor, They think that for some reason that this is only a thing that Roman Catholics would do. But Lutherans have always done this, and they have done it precisely because God in his scriptures has said that we are to do this and that it is for our good. He has attached his promises to it. And so you must know that you can come to your pastor that you can come and confess your sins, that those sins will be kept in confidence by the pastor, and that much more importantly, those sins will be sent away when the sent one of God brings the kingdom of God into your midst using Christ's authority that has been entrusted to them. Yes, he might even use your name. He might mention those very sins that you have confessed, but he will do so in order that you might know for certain that those sins are forgiven. I have suggested ever since the first week of our Lenten meditations that the question we should be asking in this season is this, what will happen if I confess my sins? Oh yes, we've been reminded too of the consequence of not confessing our sins, But we don't want to leave these Lenten meditations without understanding for certain that God would much rather forgive you of your sins than withhold that gift from you. What will happen if you confess your sins? Well, you know. God will forgive your sins and you will live. So come and confess with the congregation together. Come and confess individually before the one whom God has sent you Come and know that the word that you hear in either of those places is as valid and certain as if Jesus himself had spoken it to you. Through his sent ones, God forgives your sins and you live. The kingdom of God comes near to you and you receive all of its riches. 
all of those riches earned for you by Jesus through his death and through his resurrection. Praise be to him eternally. Amen.